What's up, Deep Divers? Welcome back to Studio Deep Dive. My name is Kyle, and today we're going to take a little tour of the studio. And by little, I mean like 40 minutes. Stick with me, guys. There's a lot to cover. Let's get after it. is ready for a studio tour. Let's get the broad strokes here. This is Studio Deep Dive. In all it's lit up by a million lights glory. So why don't we start back here and we'll kind of work our way over towards the computer and everything else. Uh, this is, this used to be a closet, actually. I took the doors off. When I first moved in, I had, ah, oh, cramp. Someone's not paying attention to their light bulbs. Oh, weird. Another one of the white ones is out. Slackers. Anyways. This used to be a closet. I took the doors off. Uh, obviously, I keep a litany of video game boxes up here. Basically, all my systems are up there, the PS5, the 4 Pro, Last of Us Edition, uh, the Mario Switch, the, which one is that? The Animal Crossing Switch, a Switch Lite, N64, Wii U, Dreamcast, Xbox Series X. There's more kind of hidden back there. Um, and then a bunch of controllers and everything. And just because I'm up here, I'll zoom over here real quick. This is where I keep some of my favorite consoles and or controllers for consoles. I'm gonna get my finger out of the way. Uh, so that is the uh, new, new 2DS XL, I think. It's awesome, super fun to play on. I have as far as I know, I think I have every Zelda amiibo. I have a Zelda thing. Let me know if y'all notice me missing any. Let me know in the comment section below because I definitely want to have all of them. I'm sure I'm missing some. There's got to be more than that. Uh, up above there, I have the two Game & Watch systems they came out with last year and this past year. Uh, and then... A switch light that's an atomic purple and the Animal Crossing switch. A couple more controllers. Just trying to represent kind of the, the broader strokes of what we have console wise. But if you guys ever want to see me do a full game system and games tour, that is an entirely different video and certainly could last a video's worth. So let me know. I'm happy to do it. I just don't want to tack it onto this because. That would make this thing stupid long. It's gonna be long already. Um, all right, so in the closet here, I have a combination of some camera equipment up top. That is kind of my backup camera right there, the Canon 80D. Love that thing. Uh, I also have just kind of a little point and shoot G7X, which is a really sweet camera. And a bunch of lenses, light cases, things like that over here. I use a lot of these lens cases to hold various things like batteries and whatnot. Um, there's also all of my little RC controllers in a row. I know it looks like I have a ridiculous amount. That's only because all of these belong to these 24 scale crawlers, which I've done a video about before and there are gonna be more videos about it because they're, they're so fun but each one has its own controller, so it ends up being kind of an obnoxious amount. I should probably slim them down and just bind them to, you know, two or something. Uh, here is my Axial SCX-6. This thing is a beast. It can crawl over almost anything. It has a crazy amount of power. It can pull uh, my toddler, my teenager, and my partner all in the same wagon. The thing is a monster. Uh, below that, these are all my backpacks and cases. This case is a, uh, was that, the DJI Pocket 2 
and all the accessories and everything. And then behind it over there is a case uh, for the DJI Ronin, which I have over here, the Ronin S. Crazy stabilization. The reason I'm not using, this is my main camera, by the way, this is the EOS R. The reason I'm using my iPhone instead of that is all the fluctuating light as you go through here where it gets, you know, dark and bright and super bright. It really messes with the way that this thing films and it was just too obnoxious. Uh, surprisingly, the iPhone is actually better at just, you know, changing quickly. Uh, other side here, I have some more trucks. Uh, this guy, the Sandy Land, was the first truck I ever got. I got it for my toddler, immediately got jealous within a few days, and went out and bought the Creighton Success, which, uh, for those of you who know it, know that this doesn't look right, and that's because I crashed it really hard. I have replacement parts that will be, uh, that will be fixing it sooner or later. Uh, I'll pull this guy out. Oh, and this is my, my Subaru Rally car. Oh my gosh, I love driving that thing. It is so fun and so fast. Uh, just for musical instruments sake. Ugh. Here's my case full of my harmonicas. You'll notice a couple are missing. That's because I like to keep them in the car so that I can practice since I do a lot of driving around for my job. Um, and then I also have this beautiful thing. So we can zoom in on there. Shore 520DX. I think they call it like the Green Hornet or something. I don't know, but it's super fun to get that and throw a lot of gain onto your harmonica and have like a really, uh, really bluesy tone. Put you back over there. Other things we got, uh, a lot of auxiliary percussion, tambourines, maracas, shakers of all sorts, you name it, it's all over there. Uh, a couple mic holders in there and a bunch of sticks, which we'll get to where I have those. And then this guy actually is the case for my Kemper. Uh, and then below there, which I'm not gonna dig out, but that's a uh, 24 channel mixer. If I ever have a band come in to record, I like to have that. Right in between here is stand land. That's where I have all my tripods and boom mic stands and everything else. And then this big guy right here is my green screen. It is the one from Elgato and I love it. I also, as you saw down here, I have a bigger green screen that has uh, a whole series of stands, but it's that's only for special occasions. So yeah, moving right along. But it adjusted the light. Uh, this guy here, this Husky workbench, is where I do mods to any of my trucks. Also, there's a bunch of action camera stuff here. Hopefully this can handle the light. See, I have a handful of action cams. I have the DJ Action 1 and 2, and I also have the uh, Hero 5 Session, which is super great for drone flying. And I also have the Insta360 ONE R, which is an awesome 360 camera. So all of their accessories, batteries, and you know other junk is in there, as, as well as some camera equipment fallout. And then on this side is nothing but drone parts. I have a handful of drones, both cinematic drones like the DJI Air, uh, Mavic Air 2, as well as the DJI FPV, which I crashed really hard the other day and I'm super sad about it. And... Uh, I have the Rotoriot uh, Bubby Special Edition FPV. I also have this Isheen Wizard that I made a long time ago and a handful of the Acro Bees, which are super fun. Uh, and then various tools and stuff to be able to work on these guys, as well as some extra parts, wheels, tires. You, you see what I'm getting at. Uh, moving around the corner here, I have, I really hope this finds a way to look better. Sorry about the lighting, and it's just having trouble with that. This is the Arcade 1-Up uh, Simpsons Arcade. I have wanted a Simpsons Arcade ever since I was a kid. It was my favorite arcade growing up. I did an entire review on this, which I'll put a tag right 
there. Uh, if you want to go watch that, it's a super fun arcade. I know it's not for everybody, and I get plenty of comments about how should have just gotten an emulator, but whatever. It's what I wanted. Uh, came with this really cool tin, which I like. Here's one of my little fancy lanterns. Uh, up above it, real quick, I have all of my disc golf discs that have something special about them. For instance, this is the shot scene around the world, Philo Brathwaite, special edition destroyer, when he got the, um, what is it called? Not an eagle. Think, uh, think, think, think. Albatross. Got it. When he got the Albatross uh, up in Portland, I think it was. This was a Ricky Wysocki special. This was when I went to the Colorado State Championships. And then a lot, I have a lot that are signed, like Eagle McMahon, uh, Dave Felberg, a lot of the FPO field when I went and caddied for the Rocky Mountain Championships. Uh, Paul McBeth, Nate Sexton, another Eagle McMahon. It's kind of easy to get his signature because he lives in Denver. Simon Lazat, and then these last three here are very special to me. This is a tournament that I hold every year for a charity that I work for called the Human Animal Bond Trust, and it's the Four Paws Disc Golf Tournament, and I get every player that plays in it to sign a disc for me every year. So those are really cool, close to the heart. Go Cubs! Don't go anyone who isn't Cubs. And then a couple discs from Special Friends. Zipping back down the line here. Uh, it's my drone bag. We don't have to get into that. Although it does have a cool tag. I think I have a second one over here. They gave me two by accident. Comes with a studio deep dive tag. So that's pretty dope. Um, before I get there, this is... The big boom mic, I use it from getting overhead shots. It extends way out, gives me a lot of opportunities to have, um, you know, down facing angles if I'm doing unboxings or whatever. All right, this drum set here means so much to me. I can't wait. So part of the reason I'm doing this tour is because we're about to move and I'm gonna have a special music only room and I'm hoping I have enough room to have this set up all the time because right now I obviously don't. This was my uncle's set in high school. It is a set from a company called Del Rey, which is upside down here. It's made in Japan that he bought in the 50s. Has this awesome Price is Right sparkle to it. You can't see them under there, but those are all Zildjian Dark K customs. And then also he had this snare, a Gretsch snare that just sounds fabulous. So it's a cool little jazz set. Not super boomy, but has a really warm sound to it. And uh, and yeah, I mean, it's half nostalgic. If I really wanted a good sounding set, I probably wouldn't turn to this. I'd get something better. Um, this, an incredible friend of mine gave me a Stuart Copeland signed drum head. Uh, she is the boss for having given this to me. FLFH, you know who you are. And I love you for it. Let's see. Getting over to the computer section. So this is more or less where I do all of my editing and some gaming and all sorts of other stuff. But I have, you can see underneath here, I built a PC. I know I'm a dork, I leave it on the floor, whatever. Uh, there's also a really nice motorized slider under there. Then I have the uh, KRK Rocket 8s for my speaker system, as well as the subwoofer Get out of the way. under there. These things kick. I love the sound. I know how dated they are because I've had them for a long time, but I think they're amazing. Uh, this is an Audio-Technica AT something. I don't know. I got it in college and haven't really found a need for anything better as far as condenser mics go. Uh, in terms of systems that I have hooked up here, I have the Switch OLED, I have the Xbox One X back there, and then over here, I have the PS4 Pro Last of Us Part 2 Edition. All of those things are fed through the computer and play up here while I'm recording footage down there because I like to have them on a bigger screen than a monitor. And also, it really helps me focus. If I'm trying to edit a video 
up until the point at which I'm editing audio, I like to put on movies or something. I don't work well with music on because I sit and analyze it too much, but I do well if I have videos or cartoons or something. So that's why he's here. Hiding back there to, oh wait, <laughs> don't skip this guy. My main light, the Aperture 300D2. Uh, this is the mini light dome. Typically I use this unless I'm really trying to cast a wide light just because in this room, the actual light dome is just too big. Uh, and I have the light set up all the time, so I'd rather not do that. I'll point out, because I'm staring at them here, these guys right here on the wall, these are custom sound panels that I made years ago. Wood frame, acoustical foam wrapped in uh, some special fabric, and I have them kind of all over the place. I have them on the ceiling here, and is that it? Oh, and there's one on this side as well. Uh, also in terms of uh, acoustic work here, I have a bass trap here. Hope no one's getting sick from me walking all over the place. I have another bass trap behind the Simpsons Arcade over there. All right, what else do we got here? There is, this is a custom banjo made by a company in Boulder. It sounds amazing. I'm actually just borrowing it from a friend uh, to see if I have enough time to get good at the banjo and get one for myself, or if I should just stick to the rest of the instruments on the wall. We shall find out. As we come across here, this is a Fender acoustic. I want to say it's from the 60s, give or take. Uh, I don't know if y'all can see the model, but either way, sounds great. Got it for a hundred bucks at a yard sale and was so stoked to find it. I love finding older instruments that have been uh, well taken care of, and this is certainly one of them. On the wall here, I have a P bass. This is a made in Mexico. I think it's 1998 P Base, if I remember. I looked up the serial number the other day, just so no one would yell at me. But she sounds amazing, feels great. This one was given to me by a friend, uh, Taylor. He left it at my house because he was in my band and never wanted it back. Currently, I, pay, I play through this Behringer bass amp. Truth be told, it's not great. Uh, I'm not a fan of it and would very much like to upgrade the amp when I got the money, but it's just not at the top of my priorities right now. Uh, got a handful of hand drums here. I have another one scrolled up here. And those I'll just throw on the backs of tracks just to fill them out. Uh, let's stick with instruments for a minute here. I have this Lyle. So close to Kyle. I should just write over it, but I don't want to. Um, this mandolin used to belong to a guy that played uh, in the worship band at my parents' church. He gave it to my friend Drew, who foolishly gave it to me and I've been holding it hostage ever since. Drewby, you're gonna have to come visit to get it. Uh, this is my mandolin. This is a Collings that I bought while I was in school at Berkeley. It is beautiful sounding and looking. I gotta show you all this. Look at this butt. How beautiful is that? Way better than mine. Uh, not terribly out of tune. Look at me go. All right, moving around here. My workhorse acoustic. This is the first guitar I ever bought. Laravee, Larave, whatever. Uh, this is before their plant in Canada burnt down, so uh, maybe it's worth all the money, who knows. I'd never sell it anyways. I am obsessed with this guitar. I love its sound and everything about it out of, was it say Vancouver? Uh, that guitar is so near and dear to my heart. Second guitar I ever bought, funnily enough, a Godin LG. I bought this off my first guitar instructor as I was on my way to uh, go to school. He said I needed an electric. He was looking to 
get a new one and so he gave me a good deal on this. Another Canadian, so we got two Canadian guitars next to each other and this guy plays so well. The fret action is so tight to the board but doesn't buzz. You can really rip on it. I love that thing to death. Moving along, this young lady, oh, she is beautiful. This, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, this is the Gratch, was it 6120D, I believe? Um, and it's the SW model, which is Southwest. Because of all the inlays here on the fretboard, the cattle, the cacti and everything, I just absolutely fell in love with this. I'm not even a country guy, but goodness, it looks good. This is a Chet Atkins model. He's a beast. I couldn't even hope to be a tenth as good as he is. Uh, came with the Bigsby right here, and this thing sounds amazing. Even unplugged, it sounds great. So if you're ever looking for a really nice uh, hollow body, grab a Grinch. From the electric side, this is the workhorse. This is what I take to lessons. This is what I probably record with the most. It's classic. This is the Jeff Beck version Fender Stratocaster. She sounds incredible. And really, I mean, I can't think of a genre that it can't play and sound like it was made for it. Got the tremolo bar in because you need to have some of that sweet action. But I mean, they're. Fenders, you know, obviously are just amazing, period, but this one really sings. I really love it. Uh, last but not least, is it? In terms of at least guitar guitars, this is my Yamaha 12 string. It is the FG512-2, I think that's what it's called. Uh, it was the one that was made in Taiwan in the late 80s. Got this at a music go round for an incredible price. And wasn't sure I was gonna buy it. Some guy came in and asked if I was gonna buy it because he needed a new guitar for his girlfriend and possessive nature set in and I said, well, yes, of course I'm gonna buy it. So, sorry guy, hope you got a good guitar for your girlfriend, but she mine. Uh, okay, other stringed instruments. Let's whip over here real quick. So I'm probably blasted right past this. This is my ukulele from Maui. I bought this while I was on a business trip back when I was designing commercial kitchens. It's a little Pono, sounds beautiful, and just made of such a gorgeous wood. Has a really clean sound to it, no complaints. Save for, it was only acoustic. I love that, but I wanted to be able to plug in. So, I went ahead and bought another, it's a, it's a tenor by the way. My hands are too big to really do well on a uh, soprano. So I bought this Luna, which is also another tenor. Has these gorgeous pearl inlays, uh, or pearl-esque at least. And this guy, is actually electric. Probably the light will bust it up. Has a built in tuner and uh, you know, volume and all that good stuff. You can actually do a bit of a mix in terms of your treble and bass. Sounds great. Love it plugged in. Love running effects through it uh, because the ukuleles with effects are just ridiculous. And I definitely intermixing ukulele and ukulele. I know it's lazy. I'm so sorry. Last two stringed instrument, well, there's three technically, but uh, got a little D'Angelico uh, soprano here. Just kind of a random purchase. Wanted something super small to travel around with and be able to play, bring you camping, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Sounds fine, nothing fantastic. This guy is really cool. I don't play him a ton, but for those of you who have kids who are learning guitar, look into the Lug, L-O-O-G. Uh, not sponsored anyway, but these are it's a really cool concept. It's this tiny sized guitar, but the strings are the GB and E strings, which are, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's this one, this one, and this one. 
So the kids who are learning on these three things and get, get their tiny little hands around it can actually apply that knowledge moving forward when they get a full-size guitar. Uh, and I think that's really cool, and it sounds good. It projects, you know. Touche Luke. Check them out. They have a bunch of different styles and stuff, so kids get excited about them. <laughs> All right, pedals. I'm not going to talk about every one of these because that's ridiculous. But uh, got some delays, chorus. The best tuner there is on the market, I think. Call me crazy. Hall of Fame for some reverb. Good blues driver. Uh, it's just a volume pedal in the back there. I don't use that a ton, but sometimes it's nice to have one. Uh, gotta have a crybaby. If you play electric, get a crybaby. I also have, this is the one pedal that I use for my bass. It's the bass envelope filter, but when I was playing in a funk band, it came in handy uh, very often. Gotta have yourself a TS9, it's a classic. I love the Pog to be able to add different octaves, both low and high in my sounds. It has a vocal harmonizer, envelope filter for the guitar, boost driver there, the Univibe. Uh, this is actually an expression pedal that goes with any, uh, the Kemper Profiler, which I'll get to in a minute. Very cool applications for that in unison with the Profiler. I have two different Voodoo Lab pedal powers, because uh, if I try to hook up this onto a big board, I need both of them. Uh, the Big Muff, also another classic. Super grungy, lots of crunch in it, love that. Um, there is also, sorry, that's light's killing me. The uh, BB Sonic Stomp, just a great way to add a, a nice push to your tone, uh, a very clean boost, really like it. And then obviously, if anyone plays guitar, you'll recognize that guy back there. That is the Line 6 Looper pedal, also super classic. That's actually a new one. Uh, I had bought one in school and it broke. And I was without it for a while and decided that I couldn't be without it. So I bought another one. Uh, last stringed instrument here uh, is this guy. The auto harp never really gets played. Found it at a garage sale, super cheap, and thought it would at least look cool. I don't have any space for it, so it doesn't look cool either. Hashtag fail. Okay. Uh, this is the amp that I bring to all my lessons. I love this thing. This is the Yamaha uh, is it, THR10. Such great sounds out of it. You can really get a lot of really, like tones I would almost record with. Not quite. Um, you can definitely overdrive it because it's tiny, but it's really cool. It has these cool lights in here that glow up and look just like, uh, look like a classic amp. And uh, yeah, I really, I recommend looking into this. I know there are a bunch of little mini travel amps like that on the market, but certainly don't count this guy out because he's really cool. The main amp over here, as we turn around, spin over, there you go. This is the Kemper Profiler. I'm not gonna go super deep into this because I mean, there are people who have devoted their entire channels to this thing. But basically, you can store like a thousand amps on this at a time. You can have preset effects. You can change the amp and it, I mean, go look up anything like, go to Anderton's on YouTube, Anderton's TV and look up their profilers. They have professional guitar players trying to tell the difference between a legit real amp and the profiled version of it here, and they can't do it. This thing is unbelievable, super portable, really makes, you know, a small studio like this seem like a monster studio. That guy is wired down here into my PRS 4x10. Uh, this thing sounds incredible. Lots of high tone clarity, uh, but still has some low end punch, especially for being a four by 10. Uh, you know, I don't feel like I'm missing a lot of bass. And then I have the profiler pedal board on the ground here. Uh, and this is where I'd hook in as well and put that expression pedal. Not to be left out because he's covered in stuff, but uh, this is my, um, Think of the word, think of the word. Cajon, <laughs> got it. This is my, uh, it's a Pearl something about bass Cajon. It has 
huge low end. When you hit it, it booms. And especially if I'm recording with this guy, I can put this dude behind it, the sub kick. This is one of the coolest specialty microphones I've ever had. It is a Yamaha sub kick and it's actually like a little drum that just picks up super low bass frequencies and gives you that like chest thud that you would get when you're listening to something with some good speakers. Um, anyways, very cool. Moving along. Look at this unsightly case. Get out of here. My two sets of keys. I used to have, where these two arcades are, I used to have this uh, 1892 what was it Bear Brothers, B-E-H-R Brothers, Upright Grand Piano is gorgeous. It reminded me of the one that I grew up playing on at Grandpa's house. But when I moved up here from Georgia, it just could not get tuned all the way to A440. It was always flat, which meant I couldn't record with it because I had to pitch everything down. It just wasn't worth it. So I ended up getting rid of that and traded it out for a pair of keyboards. Up top, Needs no introduction, the Nord Electro 6D. This thing is a beast, a total powerhouse. Has an incredible full draw, draw bar system organ. It also has amazing piano sounds and a synthesizer with a ton of effects on it. You can do crossovers, you can have it split with different voices, you know, organ in the low end, synth in the high end has a good feel. It's not fully weighted. It's semi-weighted, but I love that thing. Super fun to play, but I needed a more realistic feeling keyboard and I wanted 88 keys. Uh, that one I think is like 67 or something. So I looked and looked and looked. I didn't want to spend a ton of money. I certainly, as much as I would love to, I couldn't afford another Nord. You know, I couldn't get their stage piano or anything. So I ended up getting the uh, Casio Privia. It's the one that just came out this past year. Uh, I'll, I'll put the little model down here because I don't remember it. This thing is awesome. Has Bluetooth so you can actually play your phone through its speakers if you want to play along with songs. Uh, or you can use Bluetooth headphones with it or just jack headphones in. But really, I mean, it, it has a decent amount of voices, probably like 15 to 20, you know, not a ton. But the feel of it, I mean, the realistic feel here is what I absolutely love. Uh, doesn't make me miss a keyboard at all. Uh, to that end, real quick, this bench is an antique bench that uh, the same friend that gave me that Stuart Copeland drum head got this for me. I adore this bench and I will be carrying it around with me until one day I'm too fat and shatter it. But hopefully that won't happen. Gotta go to the gym so we can avoid breaking the piano bench. Alright, I think that we are good on musical instruments. So let's talk, I'll talk some of my dorkier decorations here and then we'll finish off with some arcade stuff. Uh, this is kind of a more, you know, cluttery, but in a small sort of way, organized uh, stuff to look at part of the studio. Up top, I have these metal posters that are interchangeable with magnets. Um, I am kicking myself because I can't remember the company they're from. I will certainly mark them though, because I have like a dozen of these things and I absolutely adore them. I have more out by the video games uh, and all the bookshelves outside, but they're so cool. The designs are incredible and really you can't go wrong with these things. They're so easy to just pop off and put back on and change out. You know, if I'm like streaming a Zelda game, I'll put up my Zelda ones that I have here uh, and really just kind of adds an extra little pop to the room. Uh, this piece right here is actually something my brother made. Uh, my brother Tyler is an incredible woodworker and this entire design, these are all individual pieces with no glue, no adhesive in any sort of way. It's all held together by pressure, which is just mind blowing and I'm always afraid to even touch it. 
because uh, I don't, if it pops out, there's no way I'm getting it back in. So here's hoping I don't mess that up. We have Dragon Ball Z, because in my heart I'm a 12 year old. Uh, this is my favorite anime show by far. My buddy Andrew got me into these things called fig pins. Screw you, Andrew, for making me spend all my money on this. But how cool do these look if you're a nerd? I think these things are so dope. Uh, they're supposed to be coming out with another series of them, and I can't wait. And especially in the new studio, it's going to be chopped up into different rooms, so hopefully I'll have even more space to kind of expand the collection. Uh, but who knows? Uh, uh, we also have a little Goku piggy bank. There's some Senso, Sensu beans back there. <laughs> uh, a little South Park Russian doll. And... Oh, obviously, Vegeta's my favorite uh, because he's the best. If you think anyone else is the best, you're incorrect, and I'm so sorry for that. There's a cool Vegeta towel there. He keeps my original amp. This is the first amp I ever had. I bought it off my friend David, uh, Fender Deluxe 85. This thing is so ridiculously loud. See that volume? It's at, what, two? I don't think I've ever gone above two because I would blow the doors off my house. The thing is ridiculously loud and overpowered. Sounds pretty good, but doesn't compare to the PRS and the Kemper. Uh, some sports memorabilia stuff here. Uh, there's uh, Neil Anderson. I'm from Chicago, so got some cool Neil Anderson, Gail Sayers. This was a Hall of Fame uh, dinner that I went to and got a bunch of people to sign. and. Unfortunately, it's kind of rubbing off, so maybe I should put that in a case. Uh, these are a bunch of first place trophies, no big deal. <coughs> what else do we got here? Um, this is The Edge. He was the... So much of reflections, sorry. He was the keynote speaker at my graduation and got to meet him and that was super cool. Little pick jar. This is some glass work. I'll mention this real quick. My buddy, Jason Buttrell, uh, blows custom glass stuff and makes this cool. This was like a, I think he called it a garlic jar. Um, I keep nonsense in there. He's also the guy who blew this super dope skull here. And also this one over here. Makes really cool stuff. Uh, Really cool to have some of his artwork on display here. These are all level seven puzzles. They were hard, but not impossible. I went through a puzzle phase. Uh, a couple really nice decks of cards. Also went through a magic phase. I hope that circles back around. Sleight of hand stuff is super fun. Now that I have a toddler, I think it's even more important to be good at it. Um, Mark Grace signed this ball. I got this for my birthday when I was a kid. He is my favorite baseball player of all time. I was a left-handed first baseman as a kid, which meant I totally clung on to him. Uh, a bunch of other Cub stuff. That is a Walter Payton signed football, so that one's definitely in the case. Uh, another, uh, another couple baseballs that were signed. And then just some old player cards. Ernie Banks, Hank Aaron, and uh, was it Oral Hersheiser, I think? Probably. Uh, moving on down, <laughs> again, the same friend that gave me the Stuart Copeland drum head and the uh, antique bench also gave me this antique metronome. That thing's awesome. Still works, still keeps great time. Uh, some juggling balls, some custom juggling balls that are really nice in the back there. Um, they don't come out too much unless I'm trying to make a video with them. little PA to hook up some vocals too. Also I run the Electro 6D through here, uh, but lately it's been on the fritz. I think one of the pots is out because it clicks when I play and it's really annoying. Bunch of books, we're not going through them. All right, spinning all the way around. Last but not least, the other two arcade machines. You know we have the Simpsons one right over there. This is the Midway Legacy cabinet. It has 12 games, 
some great games, Mortal Kombat 1, 2, and 3, Tubin, which is my daughter's favorite game, Rampage Joust. These things are so great. Arcade 1-Up is so cool. These three-quarter cabinets, uh, you know, if you get them on the riser, which if you don't, you're crazy, but you got to get them on the risers, get these custom stools to go with them, and they're such a blast. To have an arcade machine in your house is just so cool. Uh, over here, this is an NBA Jam cabinet, but for those who know my channel, you will know that this is the 30 minute four player mod kit from Upgrade Arcade. That is an imp incredible piece of gaming machinery right there. It has 10,000 games. I'll scroll through just a couple real quick. See, even like here, Arcade Classics, 2,686 games. There's Ataris, there's Dreamcast, Famicoms, Game Boys, Segas, Nintendos, I mean, you name it, it's on here. This game's, this machine is so cool. It came with speakers and a subwoofer that's in the base there. And uh, there were also, I just got in the mail, I haven't done the video for it, but there's a portable system that I'm gonna be reviewing and I can't wait to do it because it seems so cool. And Santino, the owner of Upgrade Arcade, really worked with me for uh, a little something special. So stay tuned to the channel for that. And yeah, honestly, I think we're, I think we're about wrapped up here, Bobby. A little more soundproof in there. Yeah, I'll give you one last little pan around. All the stuff. When the pandemic hit and we had to stay at home, no problem. I could live in this room. So many different hobbies of mine that are represented here. Not all of them, not even close, but some of my favorites. And it is going to be a real shame and oh my gosh, a real pain to break this thing down and pack it all up to move. But I definitely wanted to make sure to give you all the opportunity to get kind of a guided tour because I have worked really hard on this studio and absolutely adore it. I hope you all have enjoyed this tour. I know it was long. I'm sorry. There's just a lot to go through. And honestly, I was still trying to be really fast. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know down in the comment section if you would like to see a video game tour because I have all sorts of consoles and video games and memorabilia and stuff. I could do another 40 minute video just on that, not to scare you away from it, but if you'd like to see a video game tour, let me know. I would love to do that. Uh, I also have a very hardy disc golf collection. If you ever want to see that, I would be happy to do a disc golf video. And otherwise, I very much appreciate your coming for a little tour of Studio Deep Dive. Make sure to like if you enjoy these videos, if you want to see more things like this, and certainly uh, shorter videos that are you know, more hobby based and not just a show and tell, hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be coming out with a lot of content moving forward here uh, as I really have a growing audience and I want you guys to be able to share in the joy that I get from all the hobbies that I involve myself in. I uh, hope you all have the loveliest of days, evenings, weeks, and weekends. I am Kyle and never stop playing.